I just got the official Fiona the Hippo nutcracker. And yes, I already broke it because the candy cane is glued to her hand and taking it out of the box. So I have to re-glue the candy cane, but that won't be hard to do. So at the Cincinnati Zoo, where Fiona the Hippo lives, they actually have a statue of this that's like, I don't even know how tall, like 20 feet tall, I think. It's huge. And I said last year when they put it up, I'm like, you need to be selling those things because I would pay money for it. And they listened. So it's it's not a functioning nutcracker. They 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 send a big note with it that says that like it does not crack nuts. Why didn't they do it crack nuts? Well, her mouth doesn't open. Well, why they couldn't make the mouth open? Her little belt loops are made of watermelon, which is her favorite snack. And her belt buckle is a camera, and I forget why. And there's little fishies, like it's 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 field. And they also the nutcracker, this thing was like a hundred dollars, but of course I bought it. But they also do have a smaller one that is a tree ornament that is more cost friendly. But she came today and I love her. Let me see here. Um well, I got something for us uh, today. Um, let me bring this out for you. And we had a letter with it, too. So I'm going to read that. So, uh... You got a Yavla! Yavla. Yep. Um, and we have a letter included as well. Uh, greetings from the home of the burning goat, Yavla, Sweden. Uh, with snow up to our asses, we wish to send you a few words. After following RDA on YouTube for many years, we finally decided it was time to send you guys a little gift. If you've enjoyed what the fuck is wrong with you for a long time, and it's been a beloved tradition for us to listen to during dinner, breakfast, and also card games. So, as a thanks for a good show for years past, for years past and years to come, we give you, Nash and Tara, a little something. It's our hometown's very own Diablo Boken, uh, in the shape of a stuffed animal. Hope you like these cuddly creatures and keep them safe from matches and fire. Have a wonderful Christmas and a fantastic New Year. All the best, Emma and Bjorn. And I'm gonna have to double check Hello. your uh your um your address. I'm getting my own. You get your own, yeah. It's, it's, it's Emma and Bjorn, thank you. Yeah, you get. That's so nice. I'm so excited. Thank you. Don't set this one on what fire. What nice though. people. Don't, 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 don't set this one on fire. No. This, this would just, this would just. Yeah. No, I will, I will hug it and squeeze it and call it George. <laughs> well. Probably not George. Probably like Jurgen because it's Swedish. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And of course, because it is uh, it is that time of year. I'm crazy get this for ready here. So many so buttons. Lonely. It's time for the go watch. There's again. an argument. There's an argument in the chat over whether we should burn the small ones. No, there. I'm not going to burn it. I'm going to hug it. So yes, it is of course time. For the goat watch. Uh, in case you're just catching up with us, we keep an idea. An idea. We keep an eye on uh, the the Yavla goat over in uh, Sweden. Which will it burn or will it not? And uh, let's check in on it right now. Some interesting activity with the goat this year. Um. Well, as last week we we noticed the goat's looking pretty swole. The goat's been roiding up. The goat is he is he is a bit swole, but uh other thing that we notice is because of uh, apparently they they the harvest was a little weird this year for for the uh the um uh the the, the straw the hay, yeah the straw it had more seeds than usual so it's been inundated with ravens and crows and stuff. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a what picture. Is that? I'll see if I can find what a picture. What the fuck kind of omen is that? Um, well, I don't want anybody to burn the birds. Yeah, that's just, that would be bad. Don't don't burn, set the birds on fire. That that's not cool. Um, I can't find it, but 
I yeah, mean, it, it's been a little weird with, so. with the Norris. Like that could be a good thing. <laughs> it's hard to say with Odin. He's he's a weird guy. Well, for the time being, it's still there. Just being pecked at. Yeah. For whatever that means, the birds will vacate if it starts burning. Probably is. Do you remember last year how I said we should have like a Pixar movie all about like like people trying to burn the goat and like a bunch of like North Pole elves trying to like protect the goat? <laughs> I'm amazed I think that Pixar, would be a great Pixar movie. I, I, I'm amazed someone hasn't pitched this yet. Like Pixar right? works or something. But now you have the added element of like you could do like this weird Hitchcock parody with the birds as the goat is beset by birds or or Shit's Creek. You you get you get well Catherine O'Hara in there. I gotta say some of that white stuff on the on the ribbon there. I'm not sure if that's snow, all things considered. So. Yeah. Birds will do. Birds do be pooping. Birds do be, birds do be pooping. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's uh, get into our stories this week. Let's go from Sweden to Canada. This is, not only is it incredibly stupid, but um, it is unintentionally funny in a few ways. We'll <laughs> see if the video will work for this. Um... I get we are in an age where you were encouraged if you enjoy something, just enjoy it. Even if it's for kids, if you like something, still enjoy it. It's fine. But there's enjoying it. And then there's taking something a little too fucking far. Fight breaks out in McDonald's as customer doesn't get Pokemon cards in Happy Meal. No the question. Pokemons, they make people crazy. No question, the Poke Pokemon cards are one of the most valued Happy Meal prizes fans can get. The market values of these coveted cards changes all the time, with pe people eager to collect the whole set, which is screwed up that McDonald's would put these in the kids' meal, because they know. They yeah, I was going to gonna say, like, they're, they're putting these in Happy Meals? Yeah. This is just, like, designed just, to make Mc, children miserable. McDonald's has McDonald's has chosen violence this Christmas. However, They've chosen chaos. One man took his love of Pokemon too far to McDonald's in Nova Scotia, having a full-blown meltdown after a worker failed to provide him with a Pokemon card. And he's seen gestic gesticulating at the promotional display, advertising the cards, before pr proceeding to demand a refund. He continuously demanded a refund before proclaiming, McDonald's! I want to press charges on McDonald's. Yes, the woman filming the ordeal to put it online as he was, quote, being targeted. It take things long to heat up and eventually a full blown fight ensued. The manager insisted there were no Pokemon cards to be had and the store had simply run out. Seemingly the endless back and forth ensued between the customer and the manager before another customer stepped in the frame and tried to place his order. This clearly irked the Pokemon card seeker and punches were thrown between the two men. Chairs were thrown all over the restaurant, and police were supposedly called. The video cuts out before they will arrive. Now, what makes this even funnier is this happened in Canada. Child's meal. I'll take a <laughs> You're certainly behaving like one. You don't have a book. You don't have a book or Pokemon cards? You gave me a donkey, two kids' meals in a row because I'm an adult. I came there as a child. I wanted a child's nostalgia meal. If I can't have it, I want a refund. This is McDonald's Canada. McDonald's Canada shouldn't treat customers like this. He said there's no books or Pokemon cards left in stock with the whole rack of them. He gave me a donkey two times in a row. <laughs> the accent is fucking killing me. <laughs> Size small? I'm like a corner dog, buddy. Like, I like your nose off, bitch. Hunt, 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 hunt. You're going to get hunt, hunt, hunt. in the face now. Do it! Do it! On camera! Oh! <laughs> it's slap fighting! <laughs> They're fighting like hockey players! 
Look at him. Well, it's Canada. <laughs> it's Canada. They're That's the official the, fighting style. They're just fighting, they're fucking fighting like oh, hockey man. players. We haven't even ordered. Hello. <laughs> and do you know? Do you know what the funniest part is? <laughs> oh please. How much does how much does a pack of Pokemon cards cost? Because I don't even know. I don't I don't know either. I think it's like what five bucks? Five or six bucks or something like that. Like for the cost of that happy meal, probably ten bucks. You could have had more Pokemon cards than well, would come in the happy meal. Here's here's the 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 evil of it. I'm pretty sure the Pokemon cards at McDonald's are exclusives. Oh. $8.99. I was close, yeah. Nine bucks for a pack of Pokemon cards. You know what would be cool? What would be cool? Is if they made, like, a special... If they, like, turned all the old-school McDonald's characters into Pokemon. Like, you remember the Fry Guys? I remember the Fry Guys, yeah. You guys don't know how fucking terrifying McDonald's used to be, okay? Fucking Mayor McGee. You used to go to McDonald's and there was a giant <clears throat> plastic tree with the scariest face you've ever seen and little plastic stools all around them because kids were supposed to want to sit under the nightmare tree. And you climbed up in Mayor the, McCheese's the mayor, head because they had yeah. like, it was bars. You climbed inside of his head. Or no, that was that wasn't Mayor McCheese. The that leader was the of Big like Mac or McDonald's. Whatever town was had a cheeseburger for a head and yeah. then there were the fry guys who were basically pom-poms with legs yeah. and i never have figured out what they had to do with french fries because they're like red and purple and blue yeah and they don't look like french fries they don't look like potatoes they're just pom-poms with legs and eyes that, that is that everything is... was scary for children in the 80s that is one of the saddest fights to but watch. they'd make cool pokemon that is one of the saddest fights to watch a, two grown human beings. Yeah. What was that barking shit? Like, what was that? Like, at what point do you not just stop and think about your life for a fucking second? When you are in the McDonald's, like, you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? At the counter of the McDonald's in a fist fight. Over Pokemon cards. No, I understand it's a hobby. I understand they're collectibles. I'm not bashing on the hobby. But man, oh, you just gotta chill. And and remember, eh? If you don't know who in the room is the hoser, it's you. Anyway, um, <laughs> moving right along, let's go from Nova Scotia to Orlando. We keep having to cover a lot of the same ground over and over. But this one is, is inspired. I have had fights with a significant other in the midst of traveling. It's very stressful. Plane to plane to plane. We fit. This got strategic because, well, you'll see. And it didn't, it didn't quite work out the way they were expecting it to work out. Argument on plane causes flight from Orlando to divert Jacksonville when bomb threat was mentioned. Oh, God. Two people were arrested after a flight from Orlando was diverted Tuesday because of an alleged bomb threat that passengers say they overheard doing an argument between the two. Uh, Breeze Airways Flight 717 lifted off from Orlando to make its way from Providence, Rhode Island, but had to make an emergency stop at Jacksonville. Passengers told uh, News 4 Jax that a couple got into an argument right before the flight took off. One passenger said a man told the woman he was arguing with that he wanted to get off the plane. The flight was in the air for 45 minutes, according to passengers. When the captain decided to divert the plane to Jacksonville because the word bomb was mentioned between the argument between the two people. Quote, the people were talking about or claiming the other person had a bomb during the flight. The people around them heard the word bomb, reported the airline, and they're obligated to to land the plane, Rachel Corrigan said. Video, I have been pretty fucking mad. Video footage shared by a passenger showed the man apologizing to the other passengers as he was being placed in handcuffs. That's a little late. 
Too late, bro. Too late. Passengers got off the plane, told they would be reimbursed. They got a hotel room. Their flight would not resume until tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> As for the people who are arrested, they will likely face federal criminal charges and could be banned from flying on Breeze Airways. So one of them thought it would be just to fuck with the other one. Invoked a bomb threat. Like, what do you think they're going to do? Just put a parachute on them and toss them out? That's not, yeah, they, they, that's not. No, you got you to get him off the plane. He's got a bomb. He said the Bye -bye. word. No. He said the word. He said the word. That's. I have, I have been pissed at men I have dated. I have never been divert a fucking airplane pissed. <laughs> I am not that petty. Oh my God. And you're sitting in the handcuffs going, I'm sorry, everybody. What the fuck, dude? What are you, 12? Like, like you didn't, you didn't think it through? At that point, it's better just to keep your fucking mouth shut. Yeah. But that wasn't the only airline bull crap we have this week. This is from uh, Helena, I believe, was this Tennessee? Yeah, was, was Helena, Tennessee, or double check where this was? No, I don't, I don't know where. I don't know. Oh, I have to look it up exactly to find out. But the per person involved is from Tennessee. We know that much for sure. And um, again. No fucking idea why this happened, but it happened. Uh, oh, there we go. Woman arrested after running down Helena Airport. Oh, you bastards. Please subscribe to keep reading. Hold on a second. Let me fix that. Yeah. Let me fix that. There we go. You won't mock our, our our work live on the internet. We'll stop you. We'll stop you. No, you won't. Nothing can stop us. I've got incognito mode, bitch. Um, here we go. Woman arrested after running down Helena Airport runway. Helena police reported Sunday. They had arrested a 42-year-old Tennessee woman who was, quote, acting erratic at Helena Regional Airport, then ran down the runway and scaled a fence. They said an email. They were called the airport at 6.38 a.m. Way too early for this shit. Yeah. Saturday. For a, for Who about, has the energy for this bullshit? At the at airport on a, on a Saturday. At an airport. You get me at an airport at 6.38 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm not happy. I don't no. care where I'm going. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm not happy. Dan used to love flying places at like 6 a.m. And like, you know, I love that man because I did it. I fly overnight now. I get the midnight flight. Uh, Officer said the woman began acting erratic, ran down the, the runway and climbed the fence before police arrived. It was located by officers. The woman was arrested on suspicion of trespassing. No further information was immediately available. That is Did concerning. You ask? Right? That that is concerning Cause, me. Cause I don't know if you know this, assistant editor Phil Drake, but that's actually your job. To ask. Like, I I just that that concerns me. All we know, <laughs> all anybody who knows is a woman almost got on a plane, then freaked out, ran down the runway, and jumped the fence. Why? What happened? Yeah. Did she do something? What's going on at this airport? Inquiring minds need to know. Yeah. It's like, well, I don't even know. I don't understand how all these people keep getting access to the runway. Well, the, the way you get on and off planes now, I don't know how I would get to the runway if I wanted to. Some of the smaller planes that I have been on, some of those little Buddy Holly fucking airplanes, um, they don't connect to the, the tunnel thing. 
You actually have to go down a set of stairs and go out onto the tarmac before you climb up the stairs yeah. to get those little tiny fucking puddle jumper plane. I haven't I haven't been on a plane small enough to not have a jetway in at least like probably 20, 30 years. So the regional I didn't think they did that anymore. They do that for the regional jets. And if if you don't if if you don't get on the, the, the fucking it, it, you, you get out on you are on the runway. You are on the tarmac. Yeah. So if you think about it, you could be like, well, I could get on the plane. Or I feel like stretching my legs. <laughs> you know what? I'll just walk. <laughs> it's better for the environment. <laughs> Man, we're going from Boston to Buffalo. Yeah, I can use the cardio. <laughs> I gotta get my steps anyway. I can just imagine everybody standing there in line. They're like, what? Yeah. Was that, is that an option? I didn't know where, are we allowed to, what? You know, if you're the flight attendant there, you have the opportunity to just be amazing and just look at everybody completely deadpan and say, no ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet they didn't do that. <laughs> it was a moment and the moment was gone. Ah, uh, well, this next one, this is not quite such a, a big giant, you know, some of these, we have effects that like some of these stories that like spread out. They're like, holy shit, all this shit. This is just one guy. Well, it could have gotten worse. Actually, all things think about, but this is just one guy doing a weird random thing. Yet it was one of the most concerning pictures I have seen in a long, long time. And I say this as a a just unrepentant jury rigger as as someone who oh here have a look at it driver busted for using usb cord as impromptu tire chain accessory and when you see the picture you will understand When driving in winter weather on the freeway, this is from Washington State, it's not only essential to carry tire chains, but to make sure ahead of time they're the right size for the vehicle's tires. A driver in Washington State was given a hefty fine Thursday when it was discovered they had not only improperly fitted chains, they had used a rather dangerous method, method to fix the issue, a USB cord. Now, I know they work with everything, but this is a little ridiculous. <laughs> the driver had chains that were too small and used a USB cord to remedy the issue. Not acceptable. Um, it's not cheap either. Johnson told Fox whether the driver was get charged a $500 ticket for not carrying proper chains, though, like their cord, they were not quote unquote charged. Uh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because. This could have been terrible. This could yeah, because if that gives way, there's just yep. chains flying all over the highway. And you have no traction on one tire, and chains go flying, and kablamo! Maybe you just yeah, fuck up. Yeah, that seems unsafe. Maybe you just fuck up your car. Maybe you fuck up ten cars behind you. It's kablamo! I... <laughs> like a US a fucking USB core. It's plastic and wire. It'll hold. <laughs> but I mean, kudos to the USB cord. I don't know what manufacturer that is, but I'd like one because I go through fucking phone charging cords like they're made of toilet paper. So I, I, I would love to know the brand because that is much more stalwart than any that I've got. I could probably I could promise you that cable is fucked the fuck up now. It is <laughs> it is not you, you ain't getting shit out of it now. Like I have done some jury rigging shit with with cars. Like my very first car, um the muffler came bang like that and it was dragging on the highway for a while. So I pulled over 
I went to a gas station. I got a roll of duct tape. I wrapped the duct tape. It was funny, too, because I like pulled the duct tape out and rolled it under the car and grabbed it on the other side and wrapped it around a few times like that. You just wrapped the whole car? Yep. To make sure it stayed okay. in place with both doors open. Just a straight... <laughs> I was 27, okay. Tara. Why would you not just shimmy under the car and duct tape the muffler? Well, I was wearing good clothes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Didn't want to mess fair. up my clothes. It's my work clothes. How many feet of duct tape does it take to wrap around a car? I don't, I don't, I do not even remember, but it worked. It stopped dragging long enough to get me home. I mean, my dad was one of those guys. I had the trunk of a car that was held shut with wire in WD-40. Like, literally a wire hanger that he reformed to hold the trunk closed. But in my case, there was little to no chance of that muffler flying off and killing people. Yeah. This yeah, is... Yeah, like a few... 50 feet of duct tape probably isn't going to snap. Right. And even if it did, it would just, well, the, the muffler would be dragging again. This would be chains yeah. popping off, skidding, flying, death, screaming. Everything. Yeah. Jesus. Well, we have more car shenanigans. And this is one of those one things that people aren't taking into consideration with electric cars. They work very differently than regular cars. We're used to cold weather affecting regular cars in a very specific way you have to wait for them up you have to crank them if it gets really too cold the car might have trouble starting it's a little different with the electric cars you see if you try to warm them up sometimes they don't like that and if you try to warm them up with a toaster they really don't like that to what Toaster placed under a car to heat up the battery likely sparked a fire in Denmark. But why would you do that? Danish police issued a warning to drivers urging, urging them to refrain from using toasters to warm up electric vehicle batteries. The caution comes in the aftermath of an incident in Stenlil. I think I'm saying that right. Stenlil? Uh, southern Denmark, where a car was destroyed and a nearby house was damaged after a driver employed this unconventional method. Police strongly discouraged such practices, emphasizing the sensitivity of EV batteries to temperature variations, which can adversely affect their efficiency, especially in colder conditions. Um, so the incident occurred Saturday, approximately 40, 40 miles southwest of Copenhagen. Fortunately, there were no reported injuries, but the car of unknown make... Tesla. Um... <laughs> Faced extensive damage. It remains unclear whether the damaged house belonged to the vehicle owner or a neighbor. As a consequence of this incident, the car's owner is now liable to face a fine as a result of the unconventional and ill-fated attempt to heat the EV batteries. See, when you heat up batteries, they're not like a car engine. That's mostly metal. You know what an what electric battery, what, what a rechargeable battery is mostly made out of? Lithium? Lithium. And lithium, lithium doesn't just burn like normal things burn. Mm -hmm. Lithium really gets into it. Burning is like lithium's kink, okay? <laughs> because if once lithium starts burning, it doesn't even need oxygen anymore. It's like, you know what? I'm good. I'll finish myself off. You can put a put lithium battery. What they have to do when, when one of these cars catch fire, they just have to keep dumping water on it until it stops. And that can take a long until it long, just decides to stop being on fire. Until it decides to stop being. They have had these things burning underwater. Lithium not hap lithium. It will, it will go nuts. It will have a happy time on fire. My question uh, remains, though, like, even with an old school car, you wouldn't 
do this. Well, I mean, I could, I mean, it's stupid. When you say you're going to warm up the car, you just start the car and let it run for a while. Well, sometimes you can't get it started. Because it, you've never been in a place where it's been, you've been in New York. I can't believe it has never been that cold in New York. You couldn't start the car. Yeah, I've had a car stall. It never occurred to me to actually apply a toaster to there, the car. There are actually, you can build, they, they build in warmers, engine warmers into certain cars that will warm it up for you, which that's, that's intended. That's designed. You don't take the toaster from the kitchen. <laughs> And a really long extension cord and put it under the car. What are you That's thinking? That's for Pop-Tarts. That's for Pop-Tarts, right. <sighs> Something is stupid in the state of Denmark. <laughs> well, we you have to ask, what could be possibly worse than setting your car on fire and almost burning down a house? What could be worse this week? I mean, presumably something shoved in a body part it doesn't belong in. Kinda? Kinda. Woman shot in buttocks by own gun during MRI appointment. She did not bring a gun into the fucking tube. A Tell woman, me she did not. A woman was shot in the buttocks by her own gun when she brought it into her MRI appointment. The un this is a report filed by the Food and Drug Administration. The unnamed 57-year-old woman had concealed the handgun when she entered the exam room with the machine's magnetic force triggering the weapon to fire. The physician examined uh, her at the site, determined the entry in her right buttock. I'm, I'm, I keep thinking Forrest Gump. I got Been shot, shot in, in the, the buttocks. buttocks. Um, <laughs> Physician examined her. The exit wounds were very small and superficial, only penetrating subcutaneous tissue. The patient was admitted to the hospital and discharged when it was obvious there were no serious injuries. It's not clear if the patient had a permit for the firearm. The report from the FDA said she answered no during a routine screening when asked if she was carrying any weapons. Honey, they weren't asking that to hassle you. This this wasn't about your Second Amendment shit. This was about magnetism. Who doesn't know not to bring metal into an MRI? Many fucking people. Like many, that I I you I so, do not. They do not understand the basic premise of the MRI machine. Magnetic resonance imaging. It's they 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 they. It's, it's in the name. They they pretty much consider it. It's it's the machine thingy, with the with the with the computer thingy. It's fine. They don't even know what magnetic resonance imager. They 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 see your MRI. But also, my other question is, what was the threat <laughs> inside the fucking MRI tube? <laughs> That required your handgun. Right, because you could have definitely left it in the other room. In fact, that's the per place you put it. See, if you've ever seen the X-Men movies with Magneto, that is the MRI machine. It's that damn strong. Like people have, it's, it's they actually when I had my MRI on on these ladies. They just put me in a room with Michael Fassbender and he stared at me really hard. And he was like, yeah, you got, you got a tumor right there. That sucks for you. Cause it was like, weird. The, <laughs> like they've had people who've gone in there with like pins and stuff and their doctor didn't know about it and they forgot about it. Those things come out. They yeah. tell you not to bring any piercings in there. That's for a reason. Because it could yeah, turn. Yeah, they're not into, fucking around. That shit will turn into body horror. Okay, like that's how I learned that my chemo port is silicone. Because I was like, they were like, "Do you have any metal?" And I'm like, "Dude, do you have any implants?" And I'm like, "I have this thing. I don't know what it's made of. Maybe we shouldn't do this." <laughs> and they were like, "Oh no, no, that's that silicone. You're fine." It's do you have like 
what's the threat? I know, like, it's claustrophobic, depending on what part of your body is being scanned. Because I've had an MRI on my knee, and I've had the MRI up here. And, like, if you have to go all the way in the tube, it can be a little claustrophobic. But you can't shoot the claustrophobia. Well, either she was concerned she shouldn't have had the gun and was worried she'd get in trouble for having it. So thought, I'll just keep it on me. It'll be fine. Or she's just really that paranoid. And if you're yeah. like, if anyone out there is watching from another country, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Welcome to America. Yep. That's how we do. We've got problems. A lot of them. <laughs> we have a lot. A lot of problems. Yeah. So that's... I, the, the first thing we've learned this week is fucking magnets, how do they work? Literally. Like, oh my god. Can you imagine everybody... All the, all the technicians in the room were like, what the fuck was that? And they don't like pat you down. Nope. It's on the honor system because they assume you don't want to die or have things ripped out of your person. Like they assume you don't want your earrings ripped through your earlobe. So you're not going to be a fucking moron. Well, they also assume you're not a moron, which is the first mistake. Which is the first mistake. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, there's like, like even with, with computer stuff, like whatever anybody tells you when you're trying to fix their stuff, whatever anybody tells you, like, here's the problem. Here's what happened. Here's what wrong. You go, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. When they're gone, you verify everything they said because you can't, it, you don't know who it actually doesn't even knows have to be shit. computers. Yeah. When I worked at Sephora, a girl tried to return an eyeliner pencil because it wouldn't twist up. It was a pencil. You would sharpen it. And I was standing next to my manager who heard this question and just looked at me and walked away. And left me having to explain to this girl in a way like and that's that was always my challenge in retail. Like, how do you explain the most rudimentary things without sounding like an asshole? Well, without making that person feel as stupid as they are, because I had to explain to her that, no, it's, it's a pencil and you have to sharpen it. And then I had to show her how to sharpen the pencil. Really? How to sharpen it? Yeah. I learned that in like first grade. And, like, I know we live in a computer age and everything, but kids still do learn how to use a pencil. We've learned that lithium and fire are not really good match. Mm -mm. Oh, sure, they'll get on really well for a while, but that, that's not, that's not, they're not going to work out for a long term. They're not going to work out long term. Not, re not really a good match. Oh. Uh, they'll get on like a house on fire. We've learned that uh, your USB cable can do a lot of things, but it cannot replace <laughs> your tire chains. No. Mm -mm. Uh, I know they call it a lightning cable. That doesn't mean it can melt the ice. We've learned sometimes someone will go running off down the tarmac and hop a fence and everybody's <laughs> just like, well, that happened. And that's the end of it. You know, it suddenly popped into my head. Have you ever seen the blooper from the first Avengers movie? Which one? Where like all the all the Avengers are standing there and they're like acting as though the space whale is coming at them. And Ruffalo just goes, screw this. You guys are on your own. And he takes off. <laughs> and the only one that doesn't break character is Scarlett Johansson, who's just like. <laughs> We've we've learned that no matter how bad the fight with your significant other is, if, if you have to, if you're on a plane and you invoke the word bomb just to mess with them, uh -uh. maybe you need some time apart. Yeah. Well, you're going to get some because maybe one just, of you is going to jail. Maybe just ask someone to switch seats with you. And finally, we've learned McDonald's. Maybe find a better toy surprise for the Happy yeah. Meal that doesn't get grown Canadian men hollering and barking and in a hockey fight in the middle of a fucking McDonald's. 
Somebody in the chat brought up, remember in the 80s when they did Beanie Babies with the Happy Meal? When Beanie Babies were currency, people were trading their children for those little shits. You'd think they would have learned from that. But they don't. No. They just want to they just want to wait for one guy to drive up and drop like five hundred dollars for every happy meal in the joint. That's all they care about. Yeah. I I mean, and I say this as, as a grown ass man who still plays video games. That's some embarrassing shit. 